How's it going guys? Danny TV here and this is my 2008 Jeep Wrangler. It is completely rust free as of today. So we finally got it all painted and it looks really good. I'll be doing a walk around on that. This is the axle. This is what the axle turned out to look like. We've got our bump stops attached to the stop axle pad. We'll go ahead and replace the diff cover. We're just going to go ahead and clean up this ceiling. We've got our fuel tank cover on. Everything's attached. We have started it and it does run. So everything's nicely hooked up. We've got the skip plate on our fuel system cell and the new exhaust so everything under here is pretty much tucked away Man, it looks brand new under here. That's cool. And that exhaust is shiny. That's where we're at with the Jeep. We're fixing to throw the rear axle on. And this is the hardware for the lift. We still need to put the sleeves in here, but that's we'll knock those in when we're ready for them. And that's the control arms we're using. So we'll go ahead and adjust those based off the stock measurements. And our new bracket, the only thing we have left will be the brake uh, extension lines and we'll go ahead and start installing some of that I know the axle isn't complete because we don't have our shaft seals and bearings in we're working on that we got that on order so we'll, once we get that in we can always finish that off with the axle on the Jeep so we'll go ahead and finish our brake covers and the calipers and all that will be installed after we get the axle on. We didn't get quite as far as we wanted to. O'Reilly's kind of let us down not having the stuff in stock. And the closest warehouse will take one day overnight and tomorrow Saturday, Sunday. So he's almost done cleaning around here. I'm going to go get the new sill. And you'll catch us underneath the Jeep putting this on. Stay tuned. So the cover is installed, he's going to go ahead and torque him down. Oh man, it looks a whole lot better with that. Where's the rusted one? Oh, rusted. Yep, yep, that definitely looks a lot better. We got the axle underneath. And we are using the same method. We're using our straps here. We actually went up to the roll cage because it's really not enough distance in between the frame. So we've got it sitting just like that. We've got our wood under here just in case anything happens. And without our axle shafts, we just installed some tubes here. 
and we just grabbed right around that this is what this side looks like and that axle is looking nice under there man nice and clean so I think we actually got it a little bit too high but we're gonna lower it down we can always do the jack so we're gonna go ahead and start with our control arms We've got the straps off the axle to help lower because it is really close to this stand here. We only got a little bit of room and we only need to lower it just a tad. Uh, so we're ready to install the actual springs. Once we put our springs in, then we can lift up on it and install the shocks. So all four control arms are on and we're using the jack to lower it down so that we can install the elements there. is on everything is nice and tight we've got our shocks looks really awesome with everything brand new the exhaust looks amazing I can't wait to start this thing and actually install the drilled and slotted rotors and have the whole shafts and all that going but all of our control arms are on they're nice and tight it's hanging on on its own we're still missing our track bar because the whole time um, the one that was provided or I thought it was provided for the rear so I didn't buy one and that one's actually for the front so now I got two front ones and I don't have a rear one so that don't need to get a track bar and our sway bar linkage but other than that I mean it's sitting on its own this is what it looks like dang that's it for today so now we gotta wait on our axle or we have to wait for the bearing in our sills for the axle shafts and in the meantime cart the Jeep down and start on the bodywork. Thanks guys for watching the video. If you're new to the channel be sure to check out the other Jeep videos that I got. See what the Jeep looked like when I got it. It was a mess so be sure to check out my channel and if you like it be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification. After I get the axle shafts installed, I'll be working on the e-brake. Here are our pads. And this is the hardware that we're gonna need. If yours is rusted like mine was, be sure to pick up this hardware kit. It includes everything that you need. So I went ahead and quickly threw together one side of the parking brake. And this is how the pads go. So you have two of the longer springs on this side of the brake pads and then you've got your adjuster here with one spring on the front side and these two holes here are where these clips go in from the inside and you stick your pin nail here through the outside and you twist it to lock that in. This is what I've got so far on this side as you can see. 
we've got our tensioner on and we've got our back spring on and on this side we've just got the adjuster in between to kind of even it out and up here I do have one clip and I used a screwdriver in here to guide this in place okay so now we've got the emergency brake pad sitting like this so I went ahead and started with this top one I had it set up there and I put this clip in here. I had a screwdriver on the bottom one to kind of hold it in place because it was trying to turn on me. This right here is the toughest part to get out of the whole thing. This is what your cable attaches to on the outside. And there's an arrow here that tells you the tension needs to be pulled down. So you want to put tension when you're pulling it down. And this is the cable. The cable runs through the axle, through the brake dust cover, and you've got your boot here. You could, uh, they give you some new ones to replace that with. So right now we're gonna install our yellow smaller spring next to the adjuster here, just like that. And once we get that on, we'll put our final spring on, and that should be it on the brake pads. So I hope the retainer here is gonna fit through here I know this is enough space, but I'm pretty sure it is. If not, we'll just disassemble it one more time and we're just getting better at putting this together. I did forget to mention from the two drive shafts there is a difference one is a little bit longer and it's the driver's side I don't know if you could tell shaft in we've got our e-brake pads on everything is complete we've already went ahead and tried the old rotor and it does fit on there so with the new pads you pretty much need to adjust this adjust you don't need to adjust this adjuster leave it all the way at its lowest cable comes out right there and then it attaches so I'll go ahead and complete the other side. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel to stay tuned on the Rubicon build. We've got lots in store for it. They have finally came in, so now we can go ahead and install our new brakes and rotors. And so this is what we got. We also need to install the rear track bar. And these are the rotors we went with. So with the bigger tires and other things we have in mind for the Jeep. We do need to upgrade our brakes. And we also went ahead and went with the same 
brake pads as the ca as the rotor. So I'm gonna go ahead and install those. Uh, the new rotors that are in, we can install the calipers and finish off with installing the rear uh, track bar, installing the rear sway bar and the front sway bar so that we can have everything tucked underneath and we can go ahead and bleed our brakes. So the last thing we're waiting on is for the drive shafts to come in and as soon as we get those in we could finally take this thing for a test drive once we get everything painted. So I know it still looks like a lot but most of this is already sanded. The last thing we're going to have to do is actually align the axles. Since we did re remove the two axles, we're going to go ahead and use the string method and align them as best as possible before we take them to a alignment shop and get them professionally aligned. Even though they look really good, nice and straight here on both sides. We're Okay, so this is the way we're going to put these calipers on. So we went ahead and took them apart and bolted it on to the axle and installed these little clips. Don't forget those clips. You got four of them. We installed our brake pads. So then you just simply kind of guide the direction and you could adjust these, these guide pins that slide out. So you just adjust those, slide on the caliper just like this right here. So that's the easiest way I found out to install it. We'll do the same thing to the other side and we'll move on from there to the track bar. Okay, so we've got our calipers on. Everything's nice and tight. We went ahead and got our brake line zip tied to the shock for now just because we don't know exactly where the wheel is gonna line up. Um, so we just got it put to the side. Now you do want to be sure to uh, put some Loctite on these bolts here. Once you take these off, you don't want them to come back out. We also got the track bar on. That's also nice and tight. I've got it just adjusted to the lowest point right now. And once we use our string method to align our front axle, we can then adjust the rear if needed. Stay tuned for more, and I'll see you guys in the next video.